Welcome to this Design Builder webinar on modelling facade systems in high performance buildings. I'm Dave Cocking and the main presenter today will be Nishesh Jain. After my short introduction, Nishesh will introduce you to a wide range of capabilities for facade modelling in Design Builder's Energy Plus interface. Facades can be complex systems that require a wide range of energy and comfort considerations to be carefully balanced to optimise a building's performance. Before Nishesh dives into the details, let's take a quick look at how today's content connects to Design Builder more widely to put it into context. So Design Builder is a fully integrated, multidisciplinary simulation toolbox. It's a graphical user interface that enables you to use the global gold standard simulation engines, including Energy Plus, Radiance, and soon Open Foam, in faster, easier, more productive ways. As facades impact many aspects of a building that affect its performance, Modelling them may be linked to all these Design Builder capabilities. For those of you not familiar with Design Builder, note that you can use just one single model to run all the types of performance assessment you see here. You first build the geometry, and uh, obviously that includes the facade system, either by importing it from a BIM tool, GBMX, GBXML file, or IDF, or by using Design Builder's industry-leading modeling tools. And you can then use that one model to assess energy, comfort, and environmental performance, daylighting performance using either the illuminance or annual climate-based daylight modeling methods, detailed airflow movement inside and outside the building and its facades, Optimised performance with optimization and parametric tools, including costs. And additionally, Design Builder has the most advanced scripting capabilities of all the mainstream simulation tools with EMS, Python, and C Sharp. They allow for bespoke facade operation control. Okay, introduction complete. I'll now hand over to Nishesh. Thanks, Dave. Um, so, um, hi everyone. Um, in this webinar, I'm gonna discuss with you various simple uh, and complex facade systems and show you how to model their performance in Design Builder. The webinar will start uh, with exploring various integrated facade design requirements and concepts, looking at different elements and systems. We will then explore modeling of simple facade systems with glazing and shading etc and look at typical results for assessing facade specific analysis in energy simulation models we will also look at more advanced systems like dynamic glazing and dynamic shading including uh, looking at thermochromic windows and saint gobain's electrochromic sage glass finally we will look at modeling of building integrated photovoltaics and other options and resources available to you to help model advanced facades such as double skins airflow control windows or those that use new and innovative materials so the reason facades are vital uh, component in building performance is because in a typical building more than 50 percent of energy use can be attributed to various performance aspects of facades. Therefore, for an integrated facade design, various interrelated performance aspects need to be managed, such as energy and thermal comfort, uh, and uh, for both thermal and visual comfort, daylighting, glare, shading, ventilation, energy generation, and etc. So to deliver these performance aspects, there are various elements used in building facades basic facades in any building 
typically contain walls which are the base opaque element then various openings such as glazing vents or holes and finally there is shading and these can be projections on the window or on the facade or they may be elements that are placed directly on the opening such as blinds advanced facade systems involve some variation in the basic facade elements advanced facades include high performance glazing sometimes integrated with other services and technologies such as adaptive movable shading biomimetic features which emulate natural designs and processes double skin facades or trom walls or electricity generation via bipvs so along with the basic uh, elements these advanced systems also aim to address multiple facade design requirements simultaneously so let's see how design builders integrated design toolkit can handle these simple and complex facades basic facades modeling in design builder requires setup of various facade elements such as walls glazing and different types of shading and then upon that running energy plus thermal simulations where we can generate typical results to assess the facade's performance additionally further analysis such as daylighting and cfd can be done for a holistic facade assessment so let's move to the software as this is a topical webinar focused on facades i am assuming that most of you would be familiar with design builder basics for those who are new to design builder while you will be able to understand all functionality and features that we will discuss today i would like to show you free tutorials on design builders website where you can learn more about the software so going to the website and under training and tutorials page um these are uh, get you started tutorials uh and here you will be uh, looking at the latest key features in the software and they are produced in short sessions so you can quickly and easily dip into specific topics of interest such as basic geometry or model data design calculations and simulations and other performance calculation topics so back to design builder so regular design builder users will also notice that alongside the model edit screen i have on the right side pane instead of the info panel um, i have model data tabs being shown so this is because uh, i have disabled the learning mode in design builder when learning mode is off um, what i can see is that model geometry uh, is over here and simultaneously I can see the model data. This allows me to constantly see where in the building level I am when I'm defining model the data in the model and any changes to the model geometry um, I can see as I edit the data. For example, if I add local shading, then those effects would be seen. So therefore uh, it's quite useful. However, if you are, uh, generally a uh, learning design builder or getting to gain experience with it i would suggest that you keep the learning mode on because it provides certain context specific help and guidance and tools to help you in the modeling process now to start with the demonstration um, so i will create a shoebox model so let's go with uh, 15 meters and 10 meters wide and uh, 3.5 meters high and just to complicate a little bit i will clone this block to make a another floor um so now um, opaque elements of facades are defined in the construction tab um, and these include things such as external walls roofs floors and uh, subsurfaces including doors etc this is also where you specify air tightness and infiltration. I'll open the project wall. So opening a construction, we can see that how its thermal properties are defined. 
for this project wall its individual elements are defined as layers each layer has a material and a thickness so if I So Design Builder has an exhaustive library of uh, material in various categories. And if I go to the material dialog, then for each of the material, basic thermal properties are defined here along with um, surface properties with uh, related to uh, absorption and reflection of um, solar radiation, etc then depending on the type of material uh, they can also be you can also set them as green roofs if you want or define them as phase change materials so let's see this so so when you um so when we have the uh, model uh, and we have to model advanced materials which are not already part of design builders material library we can define them as specific materials here Construction layers uh, can include also repeating thermal bridges. Thermal bridging is uh, an important aspect and you can define the material and the percentage bridging here. Uh, so to ensure that uh, you model the thermal bridging correctly, uh, I would recommend you to use our uh, program help, uh, which tells you about this topic more. So generally you can access program help from of the software by going to the help menu here or you can access program help from the uh, directly from this interface by pressing this help button here and this will provide you access to the context specific help page scrolling down i can see uh, details about adding the effect of repeating thermal bridges um, is available at the end of the page Besides this, um, there is another place where you can specify psi values for linear thermal bridging that happens at junctions. I will show that to you shortly. While you are developing your constructions, you can um, check the U values and R values of your built-in constructions uh, by going to the calculator tab and um, you will notice that the currently we have uh, op the option with no bridging and with bridging is a similar value um, but and this is because I did not add any thermal bridging in my model uh, but yeah you will find all these different combinations of uh, U values and R values over here then I go to the condensation analysis tab and this is where uh, you can generate a report for condensation analysis and a glazer diagram on occurrence of interstitial and surface condensation based on ISO 13788 standard. Sometimes I notice that um, some machines the glazer diagram is not shown or maybe there might be some other technical issue then I would like to tell you that you can find uh, guidance on common user issues on design builder in it in our knowledge base system. So to access uh, Design Builder's knowledge base, you have to go to the Design Builder's website. So let's go to the website and you can go to support and knowledge base section. Here you can find common troubleshooting guidance on specific sections. You can use the search system over here to look for any common help questions such that if I search for condensation, then I can see there are two articles uh, glazer condensation diagram layers compressed together and one on glazer condensation diagram not displayed so I can open one of them and then see that here is a solution to fix the uh, problem for uh, display of the glazer diagram and in case you are not able to find a solution here then uh, Basically, our team of expert support engineers will be there to help you. I'll be talking about more of learning resources, help and support 
which we uh, you can have for design builder at the end of the webinar now back to the model okay so um as i was mentioning earlier um that you can enter um psi values to define linear thermal bridges um as well and there is a option here so if you would like to include the effect of thermal bridges at junctions either at zone block or the whole building level then you can use this option and enter the psi values here and you can look at the program help search for uh, linear thermal bridges and you would be finding more information about it so moving on going to the opening step so glazing and shading in facades are mainly defined in this opening step here we define windows skylights holes and vents glazing construction is set to is set at the glazing type field and the layout selection uh, over here determines what the default windows in design builder look like so for early stage design you can play with these settings for window to wall percentage or heights and easily change the amount of glazing and the layout on the walls for example if you have curtain glazing then you can just fill in the surface uh, at the building or zone or surface level and i can demonstrate this by filling the north face of our block with 100 uh, percent glazing so let's go to the surface and i can change the type from uh, preferred height to fill surface and if i go to the building level then you can see that the whole face is now made of glazing so when a design is finalized however bespoke openings can be drawn on the facades instead of using these default layouts so beyond the south facade i can select these two um, windows and delete them then going to the surface level i can draw the openings by myself so start here say three meters by 1.5 meters and then i can copy them across and back to the building level these are my bespoke windows now so detailed glass properties and everything else is um, for the specific glazing uh, is defined in the glazing type so i will open this and show you how the definition happens so you can specify the material of the glass and construction by material layers or there's another option for simply uh, specifying the solar properties of the complete window in the material layers option um, i can show you various types of paints that are available so like uh, similar to construction we have got an exhaustive library of various uh, glazing paints and this includes the entire uh, international glazing database igdb with detailed properties and spectral data for around 6000 glazing types from almost all major global manufacturers so you can close this and then if you go to this panel uh, over here the dialog explains the database stuff and then also the naming conventions which you can use to help identify the right glazing you want to use for your project here is one more setting which is available on this dialog is for uh, radiance daylighting and this describes the diffusing properties of glass to be used in the context of daylight simulations it is explained in detail in program help so if i open program help and scrolling down i can find the radiance delighting section and here um, this is, uh, is when non diffuse specular glazing is used then in daylight simulations it creates a clean projection of the window shape on the floor 
as per the solar position so the window is here and we can see clean position of the uh, the window however uh, whereas when you use a fully diffuse setting for the glazing then delighting results show that the light is getting fully dispersed from the window so diffuse glazing is a good example of building facade element where multiple aspects of performance are affected by a single facade element so back to the model frames and dividers is where thermal properties of window frames are specified uh, with its construction and shading this is the next key facade element and different shading options can be applied to the, to the building um, from the whole building down to individual opening levels window shading um, typically refers to diffuse shadings like drapes and blinds slatted blinds and transparent insulation these shades mainly reduce solar gains and increase resistance to heat conduction through the windows window shading is also used to model tinting effects and in advanced electrochromic glazing we will be looking at this uh, thing again when i move to the advanced facade and dynamic glazing part of this webinar local shading is the other type of shading and this can be um, used to define basically louvers overhangs and side fins to external windows and you can choose either the preset configurations from the library or create your own combinations for these in case you want to specify glazing only uh, shading only on certain facades then uh, faces then i can use the model data grid view tool for example if i had to only add local shading on this south facade um, then i can open the grid edit tool edit the glazing layout option and i will find that all the south facing windows i can group together by removing this parent grouping first and then sorting them by orientation so i can then select all these five windows which are there uh, which have 180 degree as the orientation and um, bulk edit them to add um, local shading on these so i'll scroll down to the local shading um, section i can enable local shading and then maybe specify a 1.5 meter overhang and press apply so that it gets applied to the model and close it so and close this one and now i can see the overhangs on the model edit screen or i can go to the visualize tab and the rendered view and see the more clearly that they have been added to the model back to the edit screen standard component blocks can also be used to create shading um, so i can add a component block and make a say a two meter projection on this face so start drawing thing and then specify the distance create the component block standard component blocks don't contain um, zones in their properties and uh, their properties are typically defined here in the component block section these uh, as the shades and reflects option is selected the component block can represent uh, surfaces 
which provide shading and reflect solar radiation during the simulation. Other properties of the component blocks are also set here, such as its material or its transmittance settings. These properties can either be set at the building level, like right now, or you can go to individual components and make those specific changes. Unlike local shading, which only applies to the glazing, component blocks can create shades on the building and shading the walls as well. Component blocks can also be used to model surrounding buildings and objects such as trees. Now going to the opening back to the opening tab. Beside windows, we can have vents and for allowing natural ventilation. And I can go to the surface and draw some vents on surrounding an existing glazing. So I can go here and select the vent drawing tool, create a vent and copy it across. Multi select it and make it on the clone it on the other window as well. So now, if I go back to the building level, I can see the vents are here, and on the visualized screen, I can see them as well. So, uh, this covers the basic facade elements. Uh, which would be there in a typical building and we can now quickly run a simulation and look at some results so i will make some model setting changes to run that so in the model settings i will enable calculated natural ventilation on the advanced tab disable lumping of windows and then on the hvac tab just uh, disable cooling and ensure the natural ventilation is operational. Now going to the simulation screen. I'll press update data. Change the simulation period to summer design week. And enable hourly results, don't need daily. And then select on the outputs tab, ask for surface level outputs so surface heat transfer and surface level and opening level outputs and so i'll uh, quickly uh, run this simulation within design builder application as it's a small shoe box and will run quickly otherwise there is also this simulation manager option available and uh, simulation manager will allow you to run simulations in the background or on a dedicated simulation server while you can keep working on the model. So once simulation is finished, you can load the results back in, search for simulation manager in the program help to find more about that. So simulation is complete. I will change the results set to hourly. And I can see at the building level, uh, we have the heat balance, um, which is showing gains and losses through various building elements and total fresh air for the buildings i'm pointing towards facade sort of you no know, elements related results and these results are primarily averaged or added across all various zones or you can go to individual zone levels where you see similar results but now they are for those specific zones only and at a surface level you can see um, surface level temperatures and solar incident radiation on that surface and if you open up uh, i can see at the openings level um, because the glazing there instead of just the incident there is also uh, how much heat gain is happening through transmitted solar radiation which we can see in the yellow line over here and also we can see airflow in and airflow out of these particular openings um, and a lot of this data can also be viewed in 3D data visualization using false color rendering. So I can go to data visualization and at the building level, this is showing the total incident solar radiation on external surfaces. 
I can change the output type to surface temperatures and they will show surface temperatures. We can also look at them in hourly time step. So um, for example, this is the, that was the average surface temperatures over the simulation period. This is now at a particular time in uh, a particular hour. I can also change the plot type to look at similarly internal surface results or zone level results or a very visually appealing one which is uh, openings airflow vectors. So I can select this and then I'll change the date to the time where the windows are opening. So we'll change say to 21st of August and we can visualize the direction of wind um, which is the wind speed and how the airflow is going through certain openings and how much and they've how they are um, going out so um, going back to the slides um, i can basically now show you some typical results related to facade analysis so these can be uh, typically you can get basic energy and environmental outputs from facades. You can get ventilation and airflow in and out results, such as the ones which I just showed to you. We can uh, see surface temperatures. We can see incident radiation levels and surface gains and losses and transmittance um, graphs. So this is just a brief list and there are many more building zone or surface level results that you can request and analyze. So moving on, apart from standard energy plus energy and environmental analysis, Design Builder provides an integrated way to assess daylighting. With the same model, daylighting simulation can be done using radiance simulation engine and Design Builder's TD modeling approach to geometry results in highly accurate daylighting geometry and results. Daylight calculations can provide standard point in time outputs for illuminance, daylight factor, and uniformity. Also, along with this, annual climate based daylight modeling outputs for SDA, ASE, and UDI. You can generate pre formatted reports for LEED and BRIAM and Green Star to submit for their relevant credits. CFD is another analysis that links with facade modeling. Conventional CFD packages require expertise and extreme attention to detail to set up the correct geometry and boundary conditions. Design Builder streamlines this process by automatically providing accurate 3D geometry and then with an option to get correct CFD boundary conditions such as surface temperatures and air flows directly from energy plus simulation results. So Design Builder's external and internal CFD can generate standard outputs, provide detailed temperature, comfort, and airflow data within the building, taking into account surface temperatures, internal heat sources, and HVAC systems. You can investigate the impact of natural and mixed mode ventilation strategies on internal comfort conditions, and also provide age of air and air change effectiveness results for use in standards such as ASHRAE 62.1 and Green Star. So now let's move on to more advanced facades modeling, starting with dynamic shading and dynamic glazing. So component blocks can be used to create fixed entities such as other buildings nearby and objects like trees. These can also be used to mimic dynamic shading devices as well. The dynamism uh, in component blocks is brought in by having a time varying um, shading properties. So transmittance of the component blocks can be changed based on um, say its um, schedule or uh, we can change it based on like the maximum transmittance value uh, as the arrow shows. So we can set it uh, the transmittance of these panels to change as per time of the day or time of the year, for example. And apart from these basic controls by schedules, more advanced controls can be provided by using Design Builder scripting tools. 
where we can use EMS scripts and control the shading and transmittance values of your um, component blocks by or just the window shading aspects uh, by incident radiation temperature or maybe position of sun or any other internal or external factors in terms of dynamic glazing there are two types of primarily dynamic glazing thermochromic and electrochromic transmission properties for thermochromic glazing depends on the temperature of the glass and whereas electrochromic windows often called switchable or smart windows change the light transmittance transparency or shading in response to an environmental signal such as sunlight or temperature or even based on any electrical control so both of these type of uh, dynamic glazing can be modeled in design builder um, and sage glass which is provided by saint goban is an example of a electrochromic glass sage glass automatically tints based on external conditions and optionally based on a signal from a bms system as per a schedule in the space or as per occupant requirements these dynamic classes are specially configured to set up to run with design builder i will do a quick demonstration to show how to set up and run sage class in design builder so i'll go back to the model and basically delete this one and create a new one uh, new shoe box 15 yeah. and change the block type to building block before i close the block and this is complete so um there's a shoe box and i'll just have windows only on the south facade so i'll remove windows on all the other ones so this is the north point so yeah looking at the south facade now I press delete yes now to uh, show you the impact of tinting possible via sage class i will first have to run a simulation without the sage class so let's go and run a simulation going back to the analysis tab and then dating the data so i'll do it for some more typical week and just run it now if i go to my south wall and the window here i can see glazing results so i can see that the solar incident uh, thing is uh, shown in green and solar transmitted gains they are shown in yellow and these are reaching somewhere above uh, like this is 2.3 kilowatt hours uh, kilowatt uh, on this hour and then uh, similarly for this and during the rest of these days they are hovering somewhere um, around um, the peaks are about one kilowatt as the total gain in the thing so this is the total incident radiation that is falling on the default class which we have and this is the how much is transmitted into the space for as heat gains so using sage class tinting i would expect the transmitted radiation the yellow line to uh, levels to reduce based on the control we set up so going back to the edit screen i will um, set up the electrochromic glazing using ch class and make some changes so first i have to we'll go to the building level and change the glazing type i will select the appropriate sage class glazing from the library here if i scroll down i can choose this sage class classic item and on opening the edit dialog for this glazing i can see that the outermost layer of this glass is said to be sage glass and it is coming from the international uh, glazing database uh, as the source says this information so close this and press ok to 
assign this class next i will have to enable window shading for the tinting to occur and right now the shading type is blinds i will uh, change that and choose the corresponding sage glass electrochromic classic uh, option for the window shade just to edit to show you what it contains so in the tinting option over here the electrochromic sensor is the sensor based on which the tinting will occur um, and this is uh, the sensor defined and these are the various set points which control the tints and there can be one sensor for multiple windows or each window can have its own um, own sensor and model data grid view can be used to bulk set various shading uh, settings on larger models so we cancel this and close this and assign it i will then also change the control type from daylight only to full tinting when cooling and no tinting when heating option this is an energy efficient option uh, to control the tinting because it will block the heat during times when cooling is needed to reduce cooling energy use and the opposite when um, heating is required and heating is on the last setting i need to define is the location of the actual control set uh, sensor um, where it will be located and i can assign that to any one of these windows so i'll go to one of these and select the electrochromic sensor option and it picks up the default one i'll make this window to be uh, the window where this control is located and as i'm using one sensor for multiple window approach so based on the radiation which will fall on this window tinting will occur on both of these finally um, before running the simulation um, i have to change something in model data settings and that would be on the simulation tab change the shadow calculation method to time step frequency as that is required by sage class that's okay go to the simulation screen press update and calculate the result with the same settings so let's go to the same south facade window and you can see that there is a reduction in the transmitted gains in yellow significantly so during the weekend because you know because it's there is no window opening so this is the weekend time um, and because that is the case there is no heating and cooling so the reduction is only happening based on incident um, solar radiation and that is reducing the gains which was somewhere around 2.5 to somewhere um, you know almost halving that um, gains from solar transmittance during weekdays during the uh, during weekends during the weekday um, we can see there's a little bit of a bump in the weekday mornings just before cooling kicks in but for most of the days day during the weekday when there is cooling happening in the space full tinting happens and transmitted gains are reduced significantly so i've briefly demonstrated the setting up of results for sage class and before i move on um, i would like to point out that detailed guidance on modeling sage class is available on program help so let me go to program help and show that to you so you can go to program help and then i can search here second sage class and i am directed to the search result it explains the sage class thing and you can go to open this modeling guide which explains the setting up of sage class in uh, proper detail in i at this point i'll also tell you that there are there is a section in the end of the program help which is modeling guides and tutorial page and this page brings together 
all in one place various modeling guides and tutorials that are available in the program help arranged by different sections such as uh, modeling guides for lead and um, revit modeling uh, revit link modeling in design builder or tutorials for basic and advanced functionality and the sage class one is just here over the top so back to the slides so to summarize uh, dynamic tinting allows you to balance daylighting glare solar heat gains and overall energy use in an integrated manner dynamically changing the tint in response to sun provides unobstructed outdoor views and enhanced occupant comfort without the need for traditional solutions like shades or low -E, uh, glasses or even blinds for a typical shoebox in places that have both heating and cooling energy demand then sage glass performance is much better than a typical low e glass solution um, and it is as good as a solar control glass with blinds but has superior glare protection and allows for better outdoor views without any complicated mechanical systems okay moving on to bipvs a building integrated photovoltaic system consists of integrated modules yeah, into the building envelopes such as on the roof or facades these panels for pv simultaneously serve as building envelope material and a power generator photovoltaics may be integrated into many different assemblies within the building envelope solar cells can be incorporated onto the facade of the building complementing or replacing traditional view or spandrel glass photovoltaics may be added onto awnings and sawtooth design on the building facade or added on as roof systems or onto skylights design builder currently supports various types of renewable energy generators pvs bipvs wind internal combustion engine micro turbine etc and let me show you how you can quickly model a bipv in design builder now so going here i'll use the same model that we have back to the building level so to include bipvs which are merged into the envelope we need to add them to construction assemblies for walls windows or roofs for example um, for walls with pv on the outside i can go to the project wall edit it and just change the category of the wall to BIPV and the moment I do that um, I can see that we get an option on the outermost layer to define and set up the characteristics for the photovoltaic panel so instead of making a wall with PV I will demonstrate BIPVs by integrating them onto the glazing so cancel this cancel this and go to the openings one first I have to um, remove all the things i've done for sage class so i'll just reload the template and then open project external raising edit it and similar to what i did in the wall construction i can change the category to glazing integrated photovoltaics and i have a new setting to add uh, added on the outermost pane for defining the PV properties. I'll rename it to say with PV and save it. Okay, so that gets assigned to the model. And now in the next step, I have to set the generator. So go to the generation tab select the load center and on this tab i will create a copy of the existing inverter and rename it with glazing pv and on the generator list change the type to glazing with bipv and then select the 
new glazing which I've just created with project glazing with PV. Press OK and press OK to assign it. And that's all. So now I can go to the simulation tab and update the results. So now we can see that there is a generation thing which is added to the uh, fuel usage and I can see it more clearly by looking at the fuel breakdown and um, we can see hourly generation which is happening through the PV and on the summary tab I can also look at annual building utility performance summary scroll down and it gives us photovoltaic power how much electricity was generated and what percentage of that electricity contribution it had so um, also on design builder program help there is a tutorial on BIPVs so again go to the program help and go to the tutorials page here and we have this solar PV systems click on this one and it has instructions on step by step how to model your standalone PV system and how to model a BIPV system in Design Builder. Now back to the slides. So other advanced facade systems used in buildings may include new materials like aerogels, nanogels type of things, or airflow control windows, double skin, double skin facades, or trump walls. So while new materials can be modeled easily by creating new construction assemblies with these materials. If they don't already exist in the design builders exhaustive library uh, but um, so that's that's settled there is also a special category of openings to define airflow control windows airflow control windows are those which have forced air that flows into the gap between the two layers of glass so I can go and show you where that is kind of set in the model so if you go to the edit screen on the opening tab, there is a setting to define airflow control windows over here. And if I can go to program help and search for airflow control, sorry, C O N, I find this uh, page, and um, you can learn more about modeling these type of windows from here. I can also search in the program help double skin the other other one which I had the image for double skin and goes to double facades the first link and this page describes modeling of um, double skin facades and there is a example on how to do that and next to this in modeling advice there is something on trom walls as well a detailed description of about trom walls and also a worked example for how to model them so program help is a useful encyclopedic resource for understanding modeling basics and learning more about specific topics however i would like to show you what other resources you have available to learn uh, design builder and you know get to get to grips with its uh, versatile functionality so for beginners of design builder uh, i mentioned before so let me see so i mentioned before that uh, the tutorials page exists um, where uh, which is effectively free and you can get up to speed with the software very quickly however if you are looking for a structured holistic learning then we have uh, on demand online training that we provide and you can do that so if you go to the design builder website home page uh, training section there is online training section over here and so if you can go down and you can see various uh, modules and packages that cover basic and advanced topics um, so I'll just close them and basically this content is developed by our expert technical staff so you can do it at your own pace and then you will also receive a completion certificate at the end so then um, the other place is where you have a very 
insightful resource is all the past webinars which we have done so if you go to the same training section and go to the webinars page then this is another free resource for learning advanced aspects and applications for design builder modeling and these cover various systems over here and ground source heat pump etc modeling you can also have sections on compliance modeling um, for various applications uh, we have stuff for automated lead modeling of a webinar that covers that aspect of an InDesign builder and then there are some more basic topics like uh, net zero building design how do you do those and more advanced ones such as optimization sensitivity uncertainty analysis etc so there lo there's lots lots of material there which you would find useful so then going back to the slides and this is all from me today so do remember uh, to subscribe uh, to our newsletter and follow us on linkedin where we regularly post content on software news upcoming events and webinars along with top tips and tricks okay thanks to chef that was a uh, great overview of uh, an awful lot of facade related aspects that you can model in design builder um, Pretty sure that even experienced design builder users learned something new amongst all that lot. Um, as Nashesh has mentioned, there are lots of useful facade and other modeling resources av available um, for free from Design Builder, and you can see some details here or, or review the webinar recording, which you will receive um, in around 24 hours by email um we've we have received lots of questions